right here in this passage, Paul admits that it was the grace of God that worked. But he also says he worked very hard. Now, why did Paul have to work so hard if it's God's work? If it's the grace of God, why did Paul work his butt off? Why? Why not just let God do it? Let go and let God. So when I, when I live the Christian life, is it my work or is it God's work? Or is it 50-50? Is it half and half? What's going on? Well, let me interpret something for you. When it says to will and to work, you can write this in your notes. To will is inward. And to work is outward. To will is that desire in you that's inward. And to work is that outward manifestation of that faith. It's what you actually do with what you say you believe. Right? And when our passage says, God is at work in you. Work comes from the Greek word energo, which is where we get our English word energy. So you can even translate this verse, for it is God who energizes you, both to will and to energize for his good pleasure. Okay, let me illustrate what's going on. I need a spotter for this one, and I need to uh, get into proper gear now. So uh, I need Chris Donnie back up here. All right. All right, let's do this. Let's put on some more weight. All right. Haven't done this on stage, so uh, things I do for you guys. You know what? Let's put some more weight on. Let's put it all up. See what happens. So when you have that weight in your life, when you have a struggle, who's working here? Is it you or is it God? Do, I, do you put in 50% energy and let God do the rest? I mean, how does it really work that God is working in me? Oh boy. <laughs> I'm not used to the grip, so. You have to put in that effort. You have to push. You have to give. Uh, you're one hundred percent. But uh, uh, let's do one more. Uh, 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 uh. All right. Let's give Chris a hand. All right. That was exactly what I wanted to happen. <laughs> Let me catch a breath. <laughs> you have to give your 100%. You can't say, okay, I'll put in half of the effort and expect God to do the rest. You have to put in your 50%. If you want to resist that temptation, it's up to you. If you want to get over that hurdle, it's up to you. If you want to get out of bed, you got to do it. You got to put in the effort 100%. But when you feel that the weight is too much, when you feel like, oh, it's just too much in my life, God, I can't do it, then God will help you up the next three, four inches that you need. He'll help you, help you just enough. No, he's not going to just take the problem away, but he'll help you just enough so that you can lift that weight in your life. And that's the secret to a great workout. The secret is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who is present in your life to help you lift it all the way back up. And when you feel like, oh, it's just too much. I just got it, just way too much going on. Then he'll help you just enough to lift that weight all the way up. God is your spotter. So because God works, you can work. But if God does not work in you, then you cannot lift that weight. So when you want to win over that sin in your life, you have to work at it. It's up to you to overcome that temptation. It takes effort. And it's going to take discipline. But when you overcome, don't forget to thank God for his grace. For it is God who is at work in you. The Holy Spirit is at work in you. Let me read to you Colossians chapter 1 verse 29. And Apostle Paul says this, To this end I labor, struggling with all his energy in ergo, which so powerfully works in me. Yes, Paul worked very hard. He put a lot of his 
physical, emotional energy into it, 100%. But God was with him all the way up. And he says, God was the one, the Holy Spirit was the one supplying the energy and the strength that he needed. You see, God is more than just a spotter, more than just a coach that helps you from the outside. Chris and Kelly, can you move these for me? He's more than just someone saying, hey, you could do this from the outside. Imagine if Chris Donye, as big as he is, imagine if the spirit of Chris Donye was inside of me. And instead of hovering over me to help me from the outside, what if he was in here lifting me from the, lifting, helping me to lift from the inside? That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is more than just someone who helps you from the outside. You can do this. But the Holy Spirit is the one who helps you lift from the very inside. He doesn't have to hover over you now. He could literally move things out of your path. But mostly, He's inside of you. He's right there to help you lift the struggles that you're going through. To encourage us to persevere, to keep pushing ahead, to take that faith as far as we could take it. And then we go back to God's gym to lift heavier things. Results will not come instantly, but you will soon see that your faith is getting stronger, a more defined faith. And to work out with fear and trembling, that's a Greek expression for be careful. Remember where the strength comes from. When you lift that weight, don't say, hey, hey, I did it, guys. I did it all by myself. Don't do that. But, but do so with fear and trembling, knowing that it's, it's God who supplies your power and your strength. And he could remove it at any time, right? Chris could have just dropped that weight on my face. But he didn't. So I do so with fear and trembling. For Chris, <laughs> you like me, right? <laughs> and so we recognize who supplies that strength. And I don't know, maybe some of you, you're going through a trial right now. Maybe you're going through something and you've been going through something and it's just tough. It's hard. You feel like it's just too much. It's too much for one person to handle. It's never been this hard. Last year wasn't as hard as this year. People don't know what, what you're going through right now internally and what people are saying about you. And you just feel so discouraged. You just want to walk away. And God is saying, you got this. You got this. You cry out to God, God, please, take away that weight. I don't want to do it anymore. It's too much for me, God. I just can't do this. I'm going to drop it all. I'm going to walk away. And God's saying, hold on. You could do this. You got this. It's just right for you. But you say, God, I'm just too tired. How could you even let this happen in my life? I went to church all my life and you let this happen and it's just too hard. I just can't do it. I've been praying that you take it away and you just go, God, forget it. I'm going to walk away. And you know, God is not happy that you just walked away. God is not happy that you just walked away from your family, that you just walked away from your problems. God is disappointed that you just decided to give up but God doesn't give up on you. He does not turn his back on you. He doesn't, even though you, you dropped all your weights, he doesn't drop you. No, he rushes to you, gets to where you are, helps you back up. And he says, okay, let's start again. And he's going to help you and encourage you to get back up supplying you with the energy, with the strength, with the motivation for those around you, step by step by step, so that you have the strength and the power to lift your struggles all the way up. <laughs> work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you. See, God wants you to be strong because he doesn't want you to struggle with the same old thing over and over again. This again? You repented of this sin 10 times. You're still struggling with this? God wants you to be strong enough so that you don't have to struggle with this anymore. He's preparing you for, for greater things up ahead. And he wants you to be strong enough so you can help 
other people. Like that guy in your life. No one else can help him, but he, he listens to you for some reason. Well, when are you going to be strong enough to finally help him? Okay, I'm just going to say it. If you're selfish and you don't care about other people, okay, you don't have to work out your faith. You're happy with the way you are. Okay, whatever. You'll still get to heaven because it's not by works anyway. But if you want to help people in your life, if you want to help those family members who are still struggling with the same things, if you want to help those people in your life that you want to help, your best friend tells you she's just so depressed, she feels like there's no hope in life, what about God? But you don't even know the gospel? How are you going to help her? You tell your son that to not to give up on God. But when's the last time you actually prayed with him? If your spouse gets diagnosed with cancer, are you going to be strong enough to lead? Will you be ready for that moment, whatever moment is up ahead? Well, God is getting you ready for that. And you're saying, you just want to walk away? You don't want to work out that faith? If you want to be strong enough to help other people, to serve, to do ministry, then you got to go back to God's gym. Stretch that faith. Lift the bigger weights. Challenge yourself. Instead of memory verses, do memory chapters, you know? Serve in children's ministry or benevolence. Tell your coworkers about Jesus. Tell your dad to get back into church. Lead and disciple other people. Build up that muscle. And when you start serving and leading and sacrificing, starting getting involved at church and, and serving and, and discipling, when you get all that, you might wonder and you might think and you might get self-conscious. Who am I to do these things? I'm not some super Christian. I'm not even a pastor. Who am I to do these things? I'm not better or stronger than them. And you get very self-conscious and you feel like, I, I don't want to serve. I don't want to get that involved at church. Now, this isn't from our passage, but since we're talking about working out, some people get very self-conscious going to the gym. That's why in college I didn't want to go. I felt like people were judging me. Oh, he's only lifting 10 pounds. What a weakling. And I don't know, if, have you felt that before? That people are looking at me and judging me? Let me tell you, from a, as a guy who goes to the gym regularly, people are not judging you. I think I, 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 sh I share the feelings of a lot of people. If I see, let's say, Let's say I see a guy as big as Chris Donye lifting just 60 pounds. I'm not going to think, oh, what a weakling. He could do more than that. I'm, gonna, I'm thinking, actually, that's probably his last set. And he's really tired and he's spending all his last bit of energy. Or I'm thinking, he probably injured his pinky or his rest, wrist and he's keeping it light so that he could focus on his form. Or maybe that's what he's doing. He's focusing on his, on his form because if you have weights that are too big, it's hard to focus on your form. And maybe that's what he's doing. So I don't know his story. I'm sure there's something that he's going on. Through. So I'm not judging Chris Donnie. Oh, he's lifting so little because I don't know his story. And we don't know, I don't know your story of, of why you're struggling with cussing. Because to me, cussing is a very basic thing to struggle with as a Christian. But I don't know your story. Maybe Someone close to you died of cancer recently. Or maybe a lot of stress has been building up and a cuss word just comes out. I don't, I don't know your story, so I'm not there to judge what you're lifting. Because God is working on different people at different stages of their growth, so I'm not there to judge your story. I don't know your story. But, <laughs> there is a but. If I see someone in the gym doing something wrong, like he's just like, like, rah, 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 just no form, he's going to hurt himself or hurt somebody else. So I gotta say something. If somebody's lifting and doing a deadlift and his back is not straight, he's bending his back, you, know, you can't lift with your back, right? You gotta lift with your legs. I'm gonna say something, but I have to be very careful how I say it, either in the gym or at church, maybe more at church. I gotta be very, I can't just be like, hey, keep your back straight. If I said that, he's gonna feel offended. What do you mean? <laughs> Who's, what? Who are you to judge? You, do you know me? Are you judging me? Is your back always straight? Do you always have the perfect form? I was just trying to help. I wasn't saying I'm better than him. I'm just saying keep your back straight. But 
Like I said, I gotta say it nicely. I gotta say it gently. I gotta be like, you have really good form, man. That's good. Except in the very beginning when you're lifting, you gotta use your legs more because your bend is back. Your bend is, uh, back is bending. I gotta say something nicely. I can't just be like, keep your back straight or keep your life straight. Keep your holiness straight. See, <laughs> people get offended if we say it the wrong way. So at church, even at, like the gym, we, it, it matters how we say it. But if I do see something wrong, I gotta say it. You don't believe that Jesus is God? But that's a major problem in form. Because uh, you're gonna hurt yourself or hurt somebody else. I have to correct that mistake. Even if you say that you believe Jesus died, for your, died on the cross for your sins, but you don't believe that he is God, that's a major form misplacement. If you, keep if you keep teaching that, I gotta correct you or kick you out of this gym because you might hurt other people. I gotta say something. I'm not saying my life is all straight. I'm not saying I have the best form, but from what I see, do you know what you're doing? Are you aware of that sin in your life? Maybe you're not. I'm, I'm just trying to help. I'm not trying to say I'm better. I'm just trying to help. I'm not saying I'm stronger. I just don't want you to hurt yourself. And that's the attitude that we come in to help other people at this gym. Now, but are you going to go to God's gym and work out that muscle? Or do you just stay home because you don't want to be judged by people at church? Kind of build up that muscle. Muscles grow only when they're challenged. Muscles grow only when they are ripped when they're broken. Nobody said it was going to be easy. If it was easy, then we wouldn't need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is right there, not just hovering over you, but he's inside of you to encourage you, to help you, to give you that strength and energy that you need to lift it up. You can't do it alone. So are you ready to face that challenge? Are you ready to lift that weight? Are you ready to work out your salvation with fear and trembling? You can't do it alone. The Holy Spirit must help you. It was Jesus who said, take my yoke, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's as if he said, take up my weight set. You could take this. You can lift this with my help. So are you ready to challenge that faith? To take that faith as far as it would go? To, to lift harder? To climb higher? To dive deeper? To take that faith faster and farther than you've ever gone before. That's what it means to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So let's ask the Holy Spirit to break those chains in our lives. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to help us to move one step up, to lift one pound higher, longer, to go farther with our faith, to help those around us who need Jesus and not walk by saying, oh, well, I'm not strong enough. No, because it's not about you. Is God strong enough? And is that God in you? Is that weight in your life just so that you can look at it or so you can lift it? Lift that and take your faith as far as it would go. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your grace. I recognize that it is your grace and your Holy Spirit who supplies that grace, that supplies the energy, that supplies the hope, supplies the faith that we need. So help me to use that faith, use that encouragement to lift those obstacles in my life, those challenges in my life. And just as Lainey prayed earlier, God, I thank you for the struggles. I recognize the pain in my life that I don't just walk away from those problems, from those issues. But I recognize that it's another opportunity to see your power work in me. Lord, would you work in my life with such dynamic, explosive power? Would you show those around me and the world around me that you are still alive and well and working in my life to bless others, to help others, to lift others up, to share Jesus by caring for other people. Lord God, may you be glorified in my life. And in Christ's name we pray this. Amen.
At this time, let's prepare our hearts for communion. Let's ask that the Holy Spirit reminds us of whose we are and how we got there, that we are the body of Christ. So after we've meditated on that, let's take communion together at the end.